Hey guys, it's Dani. Welcome to this month's Orchids in Bloom. Today I'm gonna show you some of the most wonderful orchids that I had in bloom in the past month. I'm gonna go through all of them as fast as I can because there are quite a few of them and we're gonna be here until tomorrow. But don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me which of these orchids you liked best. So this month we're actually gonna focus more on Cattleyas, but you just wait until next month when we're gonna have Phalaenopsis galore, you guys. The Phalaenopsis are threatening <laughs> to be all in bloom next month. So let's just start with one of the two Phalaenopsis I'm gonna show you this month. This is Anthera White Big Lip. And it's one of the very few standard sized Phalaenopsis that I still have because I'm more of a fan of mini Phalaenopsis as you know, but this one is absolutely opulent, I would say. It is a just plain white Phalaenopsis, but that big lip creates such a wonderful display. Bonus, it's one of those orchids that can actually put out quite the number of flowers. This year I have two flower spikes and one of them is also branchy. Quite the show might I add, but it is a very very top heavy orchid. It is a flower shop find, it is not fragrant, and I do believe that more and more flower shops will carry big lip phalaenopsis. If you ever see them, just know they take the very same care as any other phalaenopsis, but make sure you stabilize the pots as they will be very very heavy very very soon. Next up here we have the absolutely famous Phalaenopsis schilleriana. This is a species, but fear not, it is not obtained from the wild. All of these orchids have been in cultivation for multiple centuries at this point, and they are typically obtained through tissue culture. Now the schilleriana not only has beautiful fragrant flowers, but it also has a beautiful mottling on its leaves. It's one of those very iconic Phalaenopsis that many people have in their collection, and you will most likely find it in orchid nurseries. As it grows, it blooms better and better, and the fragrance is a subtle, violety, floral scent, which I do believe you're gonna enjoy. The only downside is the blooms don't really last as long as a normal flower shop Phalaenopsis, so you will enjoy them for about three weeks and then one by one they will start to fade. It is absolutely worth it though, and if you find it as a seedling at a good price, I think you should get it because it doesn't take long to grow. Overall, a staple orchid in any collection. Next up, let's start with the Cattleyas, shall we? First off, this wonderful No ID Cattleya that we lovingly called Princess Jackie after my white dove Jackie. And this is, you guys, my favorite Cattleya orchid. And you'll say, why? It's just the plain white Cattleya. Well, the fragrance, as some of you might know, is something I cannot really describe. It is a buttery, creamy, floral, citrus flower fragrance, which, by the way, it is a citrus flower fragrance. I have some lemon trees in the garden that are in bloom and they smell wonderful. They do remind me of this orchid. Downside is I don't have a proper ID for it. I found it in a flower shop here in the European Union. Sometimes you can find it in flower shops and I really don't wanna just invent an ID just for the sake of giving her a name and you guys buying it and being disappointed that it doesn't have a fragrance. So if you see something like this in flower shops, give it a sniff, it might be this one. If not, if you want this fragrance, go for the Cattleya Chantilly Lake twinkle, I'll write the name on the screen, which has a very 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 similar almost identical fragrance and that one at least has an ID and you can find it in orchid nurseries. But bottom line, this is the first Calia orchid that absolutely just woke me with the fragrance and many of you guys already know it for many many years. No point in insisting, it's a wonderful wonderful scented orchid, the best scent in my entire collection by far to my nose. Next up, here we have Brasso Catante Taiwan Mermaid. Now, this orchid you've seen before, it is such a prolific bloomer. It has been in bloom multiple times, but I just didn't film it because I got a little bit busy, to be honest, and I decided to show you these blooms. It creates multiple growths per year, and to my surprise, it can actually bloom on older growths that maybe have a sheath and they didn't bloom. They skipped blooming and they created new growth. Well, after a year, uh, that growth decided to bloom. What do you know? So this orchid can definitely do that. It is not a very, very, very highly fragrant orchid. I wouldn't buy it for the fragrance. I would absolutely buy it for the color combo. It is in person 
much better looking than on camera trust me that magenta or purple looks much sweeter and that white in the lip or in the throat makes for such a beautiful contrast as i was saying it is a fast grower prolific bloomer and definitely it can bloom with more flowers than i'm showing you now we've had it in bloom before and i think we will see it pretty often because it seems to be so vigorous so if you like the color combo definitely put it on your wish list and just look for it at orchid nurseries Next up, Rinko Lelio Catlea Ha Yuan Beauty. I think it's variety pearl. Now, I purchased this orchid as variety honk, but it does not look like one. I think it has been slightly, mildly <laughs> mislabeled. I think it's just the variety pearl. Now, this orchid had another flower spike recently, and I kind of waited for all of the blooms to open, um, but I waited a little too long, so I couldn't time them. I lost the previous blooms, which were magnificent. They were five, and I waited for these two, <laughs> but it's okay. This one, again, seems to be quite a fast grower. She's a prolific bloomer. We've seen her in bloom before. It's one of the Orchid Whole Watch orchids. It is also fragrant to me. It smells like hyacinths plus lilies in the daytime. Not an overpower scent but it's definitely noticeable and it's definitely lovely my most favorite thing about it is those petals they look a little bit like ears somehow doesn't it look like that like bunny ears in a way I don't know why I think she's absolutely adorable and again if you like the color combo and the contrast go for it I think it's a very vigorous hybrid and quite the fast grower and prolific bloomer next up should we say my second favorite cat Leia? she really is at this point Kaolo, Ka Kaolalia, sorry snowflake frosty listen guys when i say catlea i kind of loosely mean all of the genus catlea and related other genera now Kaolothrum is another genus that is compatible hybridizing wise with catleas and many catleas have this particular species in its parentage. This is a primary hybrid between the Kaolalthron, hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, and Eilalia, and what resulted is beyond words beautiful. Not only is it beautiful, and again, I'm talking about a white orchid, um, maybe I see a trend, but what I like most about this orchid is, again, the fragrance. It is absolutely indescribable. I tried in a previous video recently to describe it. I cannot. It, it's just amazing. It's quite powerful as well. I think if I were to say it's similar to something, I would say maybe red apples, but it's much, much more complex than that. It is warm. It is very rich. I absolutely love the fragrance. Bonus, I notice as the flowers age, they turn to more of a peachy color. And again, the camera doesn't do it justice. In reality, it's much more apparent. Yes, it's not a very dark color, but I hope you can see the oldest flower is turning peachy, pinky in color. And that is absolutely amazing. The flower is not going away. It's still smelling strong. It's still vibrant. It's not fading. It's not a fading coloration. It's just a color changer which i think is absolutely lovely definitely one to look out for because of that fragrance and because of this beautiful transformation the flower go through absolutely wonderful definitely the surprise of the month for me it's the first time it blooms for me as i just purchased this orchid last year right next up another first time bloomer this is a first time bloom for this orchid as well it's the catlianthe varut star trek golden tiger i purchased this one last year because the pictures looked absolutely fantastic and you know what in reality it looks just like in the pictures do you see that waxiness and just the sheen on the flowers that is real the flowers are glossy this orchid has glossy flowers you guys the lip is not glossy it's a like a typical texture but the petals and sepals are glossy i cannot believe it but they are they also have this lovely picotty pattern or brush strokes let's say on the edges it is adorable it has beautiful autumn colors even though it's spring now but when it comes to fragrance Thankfully, it's not powerful because to me, it smells a bit like mothballs, <laughs> a bit like naftalina, if you know that, if you're maybe from Eastern Europe, I don't know. Some of you, I'm sure, might know this name. That's how it smells to me. Um, it's not the best smelling orchid, but thankfully, as I was saying, the fragrance is not powerful. Other than that, the flowers are amazing. Have you ever seen a cat layout with such glossy flowers? 
uh, I haven't seen many. But anyway, I really do enjoy this orchid. It's one of the orchid haul watch orchids from last year and it has done beautifully ever since I purchased it. Next up, another beautiful favorite. This is Cattleya Tangerine Fire. All of these orchids are my favorites. I feel useless saying this is my favorite, this is my second favorite, they're all my favorites. Now again, this is a first time bloomer for me. I got this orchid last year and this one is a beautiful miniature Cattleya which you cannot really tell on camera how beautiful it is. The flowers are slightly translucent, you guys. They're ethereal. They have this wonderful pinky peachy coloration the pink doesn't really show all that well on camera for whatever reason but it's there definitely you know what the flowers remind me of do you know the frosted glass uh cups glasses i mean drinking glasses that frostiness of the glass is the texture and appearance of the flowers here is a little bit of a close-up I don't know why it doesn't really reflect all that much on camera, yeah, cameras are limited, but to my eyes the flowers look like frosted glass. I'm kidding you not, slightly translucent, that matte, let's say, texture to them. It is not fragrant, I don't detect anything, but it is a miniature Cattleya, which is easy to care for. I keep it in my cabinet under grow lights and I absolutely adore it. If you don't have much space, do consider this orchid if you think the flowers are ethereal. I'm just a little gutted that the camera does not do it justice at all. Maybe Google some other photos, maybe some other cameras can better show what I'm talking about with the frosted glass thing, uh, but it is quite unique. I don't have anything like this in my collection. Next up, Oldie but Goldie, an all-time favorite yet again on this channel. This is Mirmecata Vola Francis Fox. And as I was saying in one of my videos, this is the very first orchid that ever like visually wowed me. Never mind the fragrance or anything. Visually, this orchid is breathtaking. It has huge flowers. They do smell at night as well since it's a Brassavola hybrid. It smells like a nighttime flower, slightly soapy, but in the very good way. It creates very long flower spikes. And as I was saying, the flowers are huge, but they're absolutely wild looking they have twisted petals and sepals they have this dotted pattern on the lip and it is a bit of a color changer when the flowers first open they're more purple and as they age they become this golden autumn rusted orange <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying but hope you get the idea it is a must-have if you really do enjoy these opulent orchids mind you though it is tall it's one of my tallest orchids plus uh, the flower spikes, yeah, not friendly to small spaces, but if you do have the space, it is absolutely worth having. Next up, another crowd favorite, Maxillaria tinifolia. This is arguably one of the most popular orchids in uh, the community, in the business maybe. This is a species that, again, is not obtained from the wild, but it is propagated most likely through tissue culture for years and years and years at this point. The party trick of this orchid is the fragrance. It smells arguably like coconuts. Now this is the general consensus and most likely this is how you will detect it as well. A lovely coconut scent. I personally detect it as peach, so you know what? Take this as a surprise. You never know how you're gonna detect the scent of an orchid, which makes it all the more exciting. This is an iconic orchid. You should be able to find it at very, very reasonable prices in orchid nurseries. And I do believe if you live more in the subtropical or tropical regions of the world, you will find it as a staple in orchid nurseries. At least this is what I see from other people on YouTube. It is such an iconic orchid, does well outside if you have warm weather, blooms once a year only, but I promise you the fragrance is absolutely worth it. It is a very sweet peach scent to me, but for you it might very well be a sweet coconut scent. So definitely worth having. Next, uh, here's the Tulumnia gang. I have quite a few Tulumnias. We're gonna go through them pretty fast. This is Jarak Flyer Gulls, arguably one of my favorite Tulumnias. <laughs> Should I stop with this? What I like about this orchid is that it has a wonderful, sweet and very, very vibrant magenta color and it's quite solid. It's not a color that I have very often in my collection. 
in the Tulumnia genus but not only. It is the only Tulumnia with this coloration and it looks like it might smell of cherries, right? It doesn't. Tulumnias, or at least my Tulumnias don't have scent. They're not known to be scented. But wouldn't it be very fitting if this orchid smelled like cherries? I don't know, for whatever reason, that's what scent comes to mind when I see it. Next, this is Tulumnia Jarak Flyer Red Spread. Now I have two Tulumnias that look very similar, that are a little bit different, and this just goes to show that there is quite a lot of variability when it comes to Tulumnias, but they're all worth having. So this was the Red Spread, if I'm not mistaken. Notice how it does have a little bit of a lacy finish on the edge of the flowers. It is a beautiful red coloration and the skirt is really nice and flared. I really really like it. But then again it looks very similar to this one. This is Tulumnia Red Sun. Now if you look at pictures on the internet you will see that lacy margin of the flowers even more pronounced than on mine. This is just how mine is but it is different enough for me to have both of them. Just look at that beautiful lace. I absolutely adore it. I think I like the red sun a little bit more because of that bigger white margin, but they're all very beautiful and very vigorous hybrids. Next one, this one is really nice. This is Jarak Flyer Black Magic. And I think the name suggests the very dark coloration of the flowers. The flowers are not black, I wish, they're actually a pretty dark brown and on camera they look a little bit lighter than they are in reality. This is because cameras try to compensate for maybe darker objects by boosting the exposure. So that's why the color is not really really realistic in some cases with orchids. But yeah, generally speaking, all of these dark brown orchids, they are generally darker in reality than you see them on camera. It is for sure the case with this orchid. That is absolutely magical indeed. And here we have the Tulumnia Jairac Firm Big Bangs, because I have two of them. And I showed you in one of the videos this week how the same cultivar can look slightly different in between individuals. And this is because these orchids are obtained through seeds rather than tissue culture. This is my suspicion, this is what I read. Um, and whenever you obtain orchids from seed, you can have a bit of variety between the seedlings. So one of my big banks has more yellow on the lip and one more red, more of a solid red on the lip. They're both beautiful and this is how we can explain that sometimes the Tolumnia orchids we get aren't exactly identical to the listing. It's not a different orchid, it is just a variation within the same cultivar. And you guys, this is about it for this month. I hope I made it short and sweet. I feel like I blabbed on for an hour but this is nothing compared to what expects us next month. You just wait and see. I have so many Phalaenopsis to show you and a few others that I chose not to present today, but I really hope you enjoyed seeing all of these orchids, learning about them and just hanging out with me today. So again, don't forget to let me know which of these orchids are your favorites. You can choose more than one, absolutely, and which of these made it to your wish list. And of course, if you have any of these, let us know in the comments your thoughts, your experience with them so that we can all learn more about them. And with that said, I hope you'll have a great day. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Bye!